بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم My dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We hope and pray that you and your families are safe and healthy inshallah Today is the third day of Ramadan and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our good deeds, our fasting, our prayers and our du'as and we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us make the best of the rest of the month of Ramadan inshallah. Do not forget that our programs are broadcasted daily at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on our website www.edunited.org as well as on our YouTube channel. Today, inshallah, we'll be starting off our program by a Quran recitation by Shaykh Abdul Karim al who who'll be reciting from the fourth juz from the end of Surah Ali Imran, verses 189 to 200. Following that, inshallah, we'll be having a short reflection by Shaykh Said Sadduq. And finally, our main topic of the day is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by our beloved Imam Jihad Safir. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولله ملك السماوات والأرض والله على كل شيء قدير إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار ربنا إنك من تدخل النار فقد أخزيته وما للظالمين من أنصار ربنا إننا سمعنا مناديا ينادي ينادي بربكم فآمنا ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار ربنا وآتنا ما وعدتنا على رسلك ولا تخزنا يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد فاستجاب لهم ربهم أني لا أضيع عمل عامل منكم من ذكر أو أنثى بعضكم من بعض فالذين هاجروا وأخرجوا من ديارهم وأوذوا في سبيلي وقاتلوا وقتلوا وقاتلوا 
وقتلوا لأكفرن عنهم سيئاتهم ولأدخلنهم ولأدخلنهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار ثوابا من عند الله والله عنده حسن الثواب لا يغرنك تقلب الذين كفروا في البلاد متاع قليل ثم مأواهم جهنم وبئس المهاد لكن الذين اتقوا ربهم لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها خالدين فيها نزلا من عند الله وما وإن من أهل الكتاب لمن يؤمن بالله وما أنزل إليكم وما أنزل إليهم وما يا أيها الذين آمنوا اصبروا وصابروا ورابطوا واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون صدق الله العظيم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله to follow up with the, the first uh, part of the Surah Al-Baqarah from 1 to 42, 142 to 252, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala talked about the Qibla, the importance of the Qibla that we have today, Alhamdulillah, toward Mecca uh, or Al-Kaaba Al-Musharrafa. It used to be toward the east in Jerusalem where all the Anbiya, all the Prophets, been praying and the Prophet himself prayed toward that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, The Prophet used to look toward Mecca and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his prayers. He felt that why not this uh, direction of the Kaaba? And the Kaaba was, uh, uh, I mean, being changed from the east. And from any toward the Beit Al Maqdis, Jerusalem to Kaaba Al Musharraf. That's uh, number one in this uh, and the uh, part of the the surah. Secondly, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala talked about Al Hajj. Al Hajj, Inna Al Safa Wal Marwa Tami Shaa'ir Allah. So in this surah, there's a lot of ahkam, a lot of rules, a lot of regulations, a lot of يعني the system of uh, our belief and all of that. So he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guide us through this surah and this portion of uh, al-hajj, safa wal marwa, for those who be in hajj, may Allah accept from all of us. And those who didn't, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove this uh, hardship we are in, inshallah ta'ala. It will be inshallah either this year, if not, may Allah give us longer life next year, inshallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked in the ayah 177, which is really very profound. It's about the righteous deeds. Allah said, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَنْ تُوَلُّوا بُجُوهَكُمْ قِبْلَ الْمَشْرِقِ أَوِ الْمَغْرِبِ 
يعني المشرق والمغرب ام سوري سو الله سبحانه وتعالى سين ذا رايتشسنس از نوت وين يو تيرن يور فيس تورد ذا برير مينينغ ذا ريتشوالز رايت تو ذا ايست اور ذا ويست بات هي منشن الله سبحانه وتعالى ذا رايتشسنس از يعني ايمان ان الله بليف ان الله ان ذا يير افتر من بالله واليوم الاخر يعني والملائكه and believe in the angels and believe in the books before the books before Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when nabiyyi and the prophets and messengers of Allah and wa ata al mal then Allah said and give in money li yatama those who are close to us family members and orphans and the poor and he said and the traveler subhanallah and and he said wa fi riqab and those who are يعني ب under they are arrested so we can help them as well and in this month is of the month of charity we can think about people also who are in desperate need may Allah make make it easy for them with سائلين and those who ask and he said then he talk about وإقام الصلاة meaning Allah talk about the the deeds good deeds to help others then he mentioned إقامة الصلاة so the main things is صلاه it's فريدة but Allah is one want us to be really helping the community we are in or people we know family or not people who are in the uh, in need then the ayat comes to 182 Allah talk about يعني سبحان الله 189 Allah talk about uh, fasting يعني كتب عليكم الصيام so الصيام comes here also for us to يعني ان شاء الله تعالى and Allah told us about the rules and all of that of Ramadan then Allah سبحانه وتعالى talk about the infaq again يسألونك ماذا ينفقون؟ They ask you Muhammad 215 آية. He said they ask you what they will spend and Allah سبحانه وتعالى guide the, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم to tell them how to spend the wealth that Allah bless you with and then of course Allah سبحانه وتعالى talk about other uh, rules uh, like for example يسألونك عن الخمر والميسر about alcohol and gambling say O Muhammad فيه ما إثم كبير وما نافع لنا. In it there is more harm than benefit. And of course, then also this Sora talk about the family life, relationship, and when a time of may Allah forbid divorce, the rules and regulations of that. So many ayahs from 224 to 245 that tells you the structure of the family is very important in this Sora. Cover that as well. May Allah help us and benefit from this Quran al-Kareem. Jazakum Allah khairan. A'udhu billahi minash shaytan al-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala khayru al-mursaleen. Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'ad. Rabbish rahli sadri wa yasirli amri. Wahlul uqdatan min lisani yabqahu qawli. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak. We welcome everyone back to our Ramadan series. Today we discuss a very beautiful topic. We think about the hadith, which is the famous hadith, which divides the month of Ramadan into these three parts, right? The first part being Rahman. The first 10 days are mercy. All right. But we want to see the entire month as mercy right as rahmah that we should embody rahmah we should think about mercy throughout the entire month when we reflect on this particular topic we have to start at the source of mercy allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imam ahmed recorded that abu hurairah radiallahu anhu said that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said لما قضى الله الخلق كتب في كتاب فهو عنده فوق العرش إن رحمتي غلبت غضبي. When Allah finished with the creation, He wrote in a book that He has with Him above the throne. Indeed, my mercy prevails over my anger. Indeed, my mercy prevails over my anger. All of us, I know, we can attest. To this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in our greatest struggles, Allah, Allah's mercy seems to always prevail, seems to always be present. 
Allah's mercy seems to always be present. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seems to consistently give us a way out of our difficulties and our struggles. We think about the saying that we repeat every day, we repeat very often. The Basmalah, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this particular sentence, He mentions two of His names that are both derived from mercy. Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman, as the scholars say, this is Sigatul Mubalagha. This word is very eloquent in that it is implying the fullest extent of mercy. The fullest extent of mercy. The perfection of mercy, right? It implies, right, that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the utmost mercy, infinite mercy. That Ar-Rahman is a name that is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Ar-Rahman is general mercy for everyone. As we see even the wicked, the one who denies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah sends rain to even water their crops, right? Allah is Ar-Rahman. Allah is also Ar-Rahim, as mentioned in the Basmalah. This is Sigatul Mubalagha. That this is also the fullest extent of mercy, the perfection and completion of mercy. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the ultimate source of mercy. And Ar-Rahim is specific to the believer. It's a mercy that only the believers will experience. And Ar-Rahim is one who shows mercy over and over and over and over again. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being the source of mercy. If one decides they want to feed 100 people a day for 20 years, for 30 years, they still cannot compete with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah's mercy cannot be measured. We see in the narration of Umar ibn al-Khattab, which he mentions that some of the prisoners were brought before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are the prisoners of war. And amongst them was a woman who began breastfeeding the children. She would go breastfeed a child, and then go to another child and breastfeed another child. The Prophet ﷺ, he grabbed, uh, he gathered his companions. And he said, do you see this woman, right? You see what she's doing. Do you think that this woman would throw her son into the fire? And they replied, no. If she has the power not to throw the son into the fire, she's not going to do it. And the Prophet wasallam, he said, Allah is more merciful to his slaves than this woman is to her son. Allah is more merciful. And we think about the mercy of a woman, the mercy of a mother. Our mothers are, are there on a consistent basis, right? Our mothers have been there from day one on a consistent basis. No one has the mercy like the mercy of of a mother, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the source of mercy, who all of the mothers all around the wor world have, have gathered their mercy from the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we know that for us being here today, for me being able to record this under a normal circumstance, I would perhaps be in your presence, but this is also merciful where i can record something from miles away from people and them still having the, the same access as if i'm in their presence this is mercy for us being in our position today even as muslims allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the quran allah mentions in the quran had it not been for the grace and mercy of allah to you, you would have surely been amongst the lost. That I'm very grateful to be Muslim in this day and time. Don't let anyone cause you to become insecure about being Muslim. There's no deen like this deen. There's no Quran like this Quran. There's no uh, Lord and Creator, right? Except the Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And we have the Messenger, the best role model ever sent to humanity there's no deen like deen al-haq 
like Islam. Alhamdulillah, we should be grateful. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being merciful to us. We have a religion of Rahmah. We have a deen of Rahmah. Nabiyu Rahmah. We have a prophet of Rahmah and mercy. Rabbul Rahim, right? We have a Lord of Rahmah, of mercy, right? And we have right here that mercy is held in high, it has a high status in our deen. What we know is that as human beings, we are not robots, right? Our empathy, our sympathy that we feel is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the source, right? And we also have our role model. Our role model has shown the utmost mercy to those around him. Rahmatan lil alameen. He's a mercy to all of the worlds. As we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as was narrated by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, they went and they entered into the home of Abu Sayyid, who was a blacksmith. And he was the husband of, of a woman who was the wet nurse for the, the son of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ibrahim. And Ibrahim was there as being attended to and the Prophet Sallallahu went to visit him. He kissed him, hugged him, and he left. And then he entered uh, later. Some time went past and he came back to visit his son. And his son at that moment was passing away. So the Prophet Sallallahu um, having um, being in front of his son while he's passing away. And the Prophet Sallallahu began to cry. He began to shed tears. And you have Abdurrahman ibn Auf, who he says, Why aren't Ya Rasulullah, and you, as if they say, and you, you're, you're crying, you're the messenger of Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu he said, oh, Ibn Auf, he says, innaha rahmah, indeed, this is mercy, this is mercy. So, we're in a society that says that masculinity is not crying, not shedding tears, especially in front of other men. But this is our role model, able to cry and shed tears even in front of other men and this is mercy this is mercy the sunnah of our of the prophet sallallahu is having compassion and mercy allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the quran laqad ja'akum rasulun min anfusikum azizun alayhi ma anittum harisun alaykum bil mu'minina ra'ufur rahim indeed there has come unto you a messenger from among yourselves it grieves him that you should receive any injury or difficulty. He is eager for you, for the believers. He is full of kindness and pity and mercy. He is full of mercy, right? And this is a very special ayat in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam two of his own names. One name being Ra'uf, being full of kindness and pity. And Rahim. One who shows mercy and, and compassion, right? So the Prophet Wasallam, he was merciful. He was known to be merciful. They came to him and they wanted him to say a prayer or curse um, the, the enemies, right? The enemy who they just fought in the battle of Uhud. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he responded, Inni lam ub'ad la'anan wa inna ma bu'idtu rahmah. I was not sent as a curse, rather I was sent as a mercy, right? I wasn't here to curse anyone. I'm sent as a mercy. And those who are following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are sent here to be merciful. How do your neighbors feel about you? How do your children feel about you? Are you an annoyance in the community? How does your community feel about you? Do they see you as a curse or a person of mercy and compassion and this is a question that we have to ask ourselves because people should see us as a person of mercy right because we're following the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was known to be merciful in regards to the children they loved him right we know that um, with his daughter uh, zainab radiyallahu anha while he was uh, leading the salat he would carry her on his shoulders right and he, when he would come down, he would put her down, right? And then when he would stand back up, he would put her back on his shoulders, right? He referred to his grandsons as Rayhan uh, Ataya Mina Dunya, right? A sweet smelling flowers in the dunya. Sweet smelling flowers in the dunya. 
You tell someone that in this day and time, you say this about your son, then people may look at you crazy and strange, right? This is the type of masculinity. It, being a man that's following the sunnah is being a man of compassion, being a man of mercy, right? Our sisters be, should be women of mercy and compassion, right? And they should be known by that. We should be known by being people of mercy and, and compassion, right? Being merciful towards, towards others, even if they're not Muslims, right? And we see in the famous story of Asma, the daughter of Abu Bakr, in which her mother came to visit her, and her mother had yet to accept Islam. And she rejected her mother, and she rejected her mother's gifts. And this got back to the Prophet wasallam. and there was an ayat of Qur'an that was revealed because of this matter. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلون لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقصطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقصطين. So Allah subhanahu wa taala mentions, Allah does not forbid you uh, to deal justly and kindly with those who didn't fight against you on account of your religion nor drove you out of your homes. Indeed, Allah loves those, right? In Allah, you hibbul muqasitin. That Allah loves those who are just, right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who show compassion. That we have individuals who are maybe not be Muslim in our lives, right? Our, our neighbors, right? We still have to show utmost mercy and compassion to them. Even for those who we work with, our co-workers, we see them at work. We don't necessarily agree with their lifestyle. But we need to show compassion to them. And this was the way of the Prophet ﷺ. And we see right here in this day and time that we have individuals that, that of course, they may speak against Islam. But Islam is not going to grow unless it grows through mercy. That we have to be individuals of mercy. As we have the Prophet ﷺ, he was an individual who was merciful to his enemy. He was merciful to his enemy. We see that before the battle of Badr, the Prophet ﷺ told the companions about some of the people of Banu Hashim and some from the Quraysh who they did good things. So he said, he gave them, uh, there was a, uh, a, some names and he said, if you encounter these individuals, do not kill them, okay? For they were forced to fight. Have mercy on them, right? And amongst them was his uncle, Al-Abbas, Abdul Muttalib, was amongst them. And he told the people, do not kill these individuals, right? So for our lives, what we know is that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his mercy always prevails over his wrath. His mercy always prevails over his anger. So us, we should reflect that our mercy should always prevail over our anger, even amidst our enemies, people we don't like, people who talk bad about us. We should always show mercy and compassion. My, mercy, my message is simple. For the husbands out there, be merciful to your wives. For the wives, be merciful to your husband. Be merciful to your children in this particular month. Be merciful always. Be merciful to your neighbor. This deen spread with mercy and shall continue to spread with mercy. We close it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning in the Quran, Allah wa That and obey Allah and the messenger that you may obtain mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Rahmatan Lil Alameen. He's a mercy to all the worlds. And obeying Allah means being merciful to others. Obeying Allah means embodying mercy and compassion. And following the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam means being merciful and compassionate, showing compassion, showing mercy to others. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Make us of individuals who are merciful to others in this month. Be merciful.
to your neighbor. Be merciful to each other in this month. This is the month of mercy. Ramadan Mubarak to all of you all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to bestow mercy on all of you all. Subhanaka lahum wa bihamdika nashadu wa la ilaha illa an. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khairan Imam Jihad Safir for an amazing reminder about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. During this month of generosity and charity, I encourage everyone to please try and check in on our community members who might be in need or who might be facing difficulties during these unprecedented times. Here at Aid United, we are committed to helping our brothers and sisters who are in need and are providing free daily iftar for pickup for those families in need at two locations at Tamarind Restaurant in Chino and Ashiana Restaurant in Damanbar. For more information about this food drive, you can go to our website, www.aidunited.org. Please help spread the word. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept everyone's efforts in making these programs possible. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.